What is up everybody? Welcome back. Today we have a special Pride Month video. It's been a while since I posted anything on this channel, especially about like my transition and stuff like that. But since it's Pride Month, I actually wanted to do something a little special and, and talk about how I started to transition medically. I think that this could offer a lot of insight to people who want to start transitioning and kind of don't know where to start because, you know, at some point I didn't know where to start. But I'm going to be sharing my journey up until now. I'm actually six days away from being 10 months on T and I'm three months post-op, top surgery. I take weekly testosterone shots and I've been doing that for coming up on 10 months. This shot day coming up will be my 10 months on T and it's on Juneteenth, which is pretty dope because <laughs> black power. Let's get into how I started to medically transition. The way that I started medically transitioning is so dangerous and could have went a lot worse than it did. But I'm thankful that, you know, I got surgery when I did. I, I, I met the doctors that I did when I did. And like, you know, even though the experience was painful, like it definitely like brought me on the other side to see, you know, so many more things and learn so many more things. That's kind of where I started. So with the whole binding aspect, I was very new to binding. I had been watching trans guys online talk about binding and kind of giving tips. Um, by the way, I didn't pay for any of my binders. There are plenty of binder drives out there. I'll try to find some and link them in the description for anybody who needs it. And I also have uh, two binders. I have one uh, that's extra large and I have one that is I think a medium or a large or something like that. But if anybody needs one, DM me and I'll be sure to get that over to you. I also have an extra roll of trans tape which trans tape, I want to do a video separately on that. It's one of the most safe uh, binding methods that I've used and the most comfortable as well. Like, But, you know, I'll get into that in another video. I really would hope trans tape could, like, <laughs> sponsor me because that would be dope because I would love to just do a giveaway and give away, like, some trans tape to people because it's it's a lifesaver. It, you know what I'm saying? You can shower in it. You can sleep in it. You know, like, it's comfortable. And I know it's it's a bit it's a bit it's something to get used to, but like I said, let me get into it in another video because I can go on about trans tape all day. I was binding. I got my first binder. Um, that binder was a medium, a GC2B medium. And what I didn't know back then, you know, I did read the instructions, and it was like, okay, we don't these are not shirt shirt sizes. These are different sizes. But I just you know I, I needed one, so I just assumed I'm like, okay, cool, I'm a medium. So. Ended up getting mine. I've been binding. I was binding for a while, you know, working um, at places as I, you know, transition and, you know, want to be called the pronouns that I prefer. It was difficult. You know, I'd have to bind almost every day and I'd be at places where I'd be, it'd be days where I don't want to bind because of the pain, but it's just like, you know, to feel comfortable and to feel seen as who I am, like I had to bind. So I would bind and so it got to a point where my ribs started to hurt. And like I said before, you know, it wasn't my size. So it was like literally squeezing me way more than it should have. I went to the doctor to get an x-ray on my ribs because I really thought that the binder was pushing my ribs to a point of like sprain, fracture, or like to being broken. I went to urgent care to get an x-ray on my ribs. Luckily, my ribs weren't broken. It just was like a little inflammation and irritation. But that doctor appointment is the reason that I started to medically transition. A little story about how I went into the office that day and what happened when I came out on the other side. So, like I said, I went to the doctor to get an x-ray. I went in, um, I told the doctor, like, hey, you know, I had been wearing a binder and it's pushing my ribs. And, you know, she had she had said something like, girl, why are you doing that? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, ooh. But we continued to have the conversation. And, and at some point she was like, okay, so what kind of binder is this? Like, what are you talking like a corset, like a waist trainer? And I'm like, no, like a chest binder. She's like, a chest binder. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Let her know, like, hey, like, I bind because I'm trans and, like, I'm, my pronouns, I prefer he, him pronouns. Literally, she, she literally was like, oh my gosh. Like, I'm so sorry. And she was like, we need to change your information in your chart, for one. That's the first thing. You need to change the information in your chart so that it matches your identity. Okay, thank goodness because I can't it, it's so tough getting misgendered outside of the medical you know being in being in a doctor's office getting misgendered every day but like if that can be avoided yes so if any of you like go to a doctor's office and they misgender you or dead name you 
just ask them if they have a system where you, they can put your gender inside of your chart as well as your preferred name. As soon as she found out my pronouns and my preferred name, which I told her like, yeah, I go by Zion, I prefer Zion, and she changed that in my chart. So like literally my whole chart, like now since she changed it has been the same and I've always been known as Zion. Anytime I go to the doctor, hospital, um, and my pronouns are he, him. And if they mess up, it's because they're either being shady or they didn't read my chart. Ended up finding out my ribs were not broken or sprained. They were just inflamed and irritated from me binding so much and binding with a binder that was just way too small for me. Um, so once she changed my information in my chart, uh, she told me about all of these local doctors and facilities that actually help transgender people. Ended up, she gave me resources like before leaving the doctor's office that day, she gave me like multiple packets of options to like figure out what I can do to start medical transition. Center that was local to me, it wasn't in my network for my insurance, but I think at that point I didn't have insurance yet. That day was like just amazing because that just showed me so many things and so many possibilities. And it's like, I, you know, at that point I realized like, you know, I don't have to suffer. Like if medically transitioning is something that I want, I don't have to suffer. So that was how I got the information on how to start medically transitioning. Now this is how I actually put my plan into action. I began like writing my goals and figuring out kind of what I wanted to do to transition. And honestly, before I started T, I wanted to freeze my eggs first uh, because I do want to have bio kids, but um, you know, that ended up not happening how I wanted it to because of just affordability. But at the same time, um, I was able to start T August 19th, 2021. So that was July, 2021 when I, uh, when I had my issues with my like ribs and stuff in August um, of that same year, I ended up starting T. I ended up going to a nonprofit organization that was local to me. And I talked to them about like, you know, having, wanting to start uh, transitioning medically and like, you know, talking about what could I do to, you know, do that affordably was working and stuff like that but i just you know i didn't even understand how much tea cost like you know now looking back i'm like oh like it you know it's not as expensive as i think it is the most expensive part is really the doctor appointment even paying out of pocket for my tea i wasn't paying more than twenty dollars more than ten dollars um and now i don't pay for my tea at all like after my surgery um they just automatically because everything is through my medical records so i ended up getting tea for free now um which is awesome first step was finding insurance and I think that this is like such a tough thing for a lot of people in our community is feeling like we don't have accessibility to affordable insurance. Um, but there are options out there. Um, I talked to a nonprofit and they sent me to a healthcare navigator. So remember these key words, healthcare navigator. I found me a healthcare navigator and she ended up being able to help me get insurance. And I think I only paid out of pocket like 15, 13 to 15 dollars or something per month. And I was able to get vision insurance as well. Kind of went down the list and started making a list of like who I wanted to go to, who I wanted to check out and who and see who took my insurance. I ended up finding a, a primary care doctor about 35 to 40 minutes from me. And I just went ahead and went for my first checkup and went to go talk to him about like my options for starting tea. He helped me start tea within literally that same week. So I went in August 18th and August 19th is my shot day, my start day. 18th, 2021 is my start day of starting tea and literally like I will say tea saved my life because there are times that are so, that have been so difficult but like being on my journey helps me be so gratuitous and just so show so much gratitude towards life honestly gender affirming care saves lives literally and i think people don't understand that especially with the way that the laws are going you know with all the laws that are being put in place people don't understand how powerful hrt and how powerful um affirming care is even if affirming care is just being you know called your preferred pronouns in a doctor's office you know um so from there i kept going to my primary care doctor for my labs and stuff like that you know as i went there we talked about my goals as far as my transition and he did what he could to you know provide me with resources to get to a, to where i wanted to be the next step I top surgery so um i had been looking online he had recommended a person to me and that's the person that's the doctor i was going to go to for my surgery 
uh, but he ended up not being in my network. So I ended up finding a whole nother doctor, which um, is the doctor that did my surgery, Dr. Blair Wormer. My surgery came out dope. I'm gonna be doing an update on my chest. Went to Blair Wormer for my consultation. I went for my consultation in 2021, and I was really hoping that before the end of the year, I'd be able to get my surgery. I ended up having to wait a little bit longer um, and I got my surgery March 9th, 2022. And I came out on the other side, you know, healthy and, and feeling more like myself than ever. That has been my journey up until now for medic for my medical transition. That is how I started to medically transition. That, those are like the ins and outs of it all. Um, if you have any questions and you need help, like figuring out where to start and those resources that I kind of spoke about don't help you, um, just leave a comment. Maybe I could talk to some people that I know within community. Maybe they, I could send you some resources. But yeah, that is how I got to this point. And you know, even though I feel like I'm still, you know, in a transitioning phase in my life, like not even about my medical side of transitioning, uh, just life in general, like is is in a transition phase. Um, I'm so happy where I'm at. Glad I took the steps to be here and be there for myself. Um, because at the end of the day, that's what it was. Like I had to be there for myself. Um, it doesn't matter what other people think about you. Or at the end of the day, it's about how you feel about yourself. If you're like of age and, and you have access and maybe you're scared of what your family's gonna think, of course can consider those aspects because safety is an important thing. And if that is a, a situation where it comes down to your safety, obviously wait till you're in a safe situation but if you if you simply cannot wait like there are options out there there are people out there that will help you get to where you need to be even if that's confidence wise even if that's just talking to a therapist like even if your 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 transition just looks like talking to a therapist and you know getting help on that end there's help out there there were times where i just felt stuck and i didn't know how long it was going to take for me to start tea or how long it was going to take for me to start surgery um and all that stuff but here I am, you know, uh, when you watch this video, you know, I'll be 10 months on T and four months post-op top surgery. Appreciate you for watching. I wanted to do this video for Pride Month, so happy Pride Month to everybody out there celebrating it. And to all the allies as well, keep supporting us um, because it's much needed. We live in a very hateful world and it's people like you and people like, you know, us in the community that make this a better place to live in. But that's all I have for today. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you have a great day, night, whenever you're watching this. And be sure to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace.